Hey folks, Gwei. I want to offer you some wisdom. Um, this is some wisdom from a friend of mine here in Shelburne. Brilliant man. Ridiculously smart. His knowledge comes from his experience. The experiences that he had growing up, the experiences that he had as a young adult, as a young man, his experiences of growing from who he was to the person he is today. He carries with him a lot of pain. A lot of negative energy. He carries with him certain desires, certain urges to use unhealthy coping mechanisms in order to deal with his pain on a day-to-day -day basis. We were talking about this one day and he told me how he deals with it. He told me what he does when those urges build up within him. You see, something might happen, he's triggered, and all of a sudden he wants to do that thing that he knows is destructive but it's the thing that he's used to doing in order to make his way through this moment. It's the thing he desperately wants to do in order to make this moment go away. But see, he knows, he knows a truth that he shared with me that I had never seen this way before. And the truth is, is that that unhealthy coping mechanism that he wants to employ, well, it's going to make things worse. We all, we all know that. That unhealthy mechanism that he wants to employ by, by trying to fight it, by saying, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. We actually end up fighting another separate battle. Not only are we dealing with the thing that has, that has caused the trigger, not only are we dealing with the memories that have been triggered, now all of a sudden we're also fighting battling the desire, our internal desire to make the pain go away by employing a particular methodology, a particular strategy. And usually he explains that that's when it all becomes too much. That's when it all becomes too much and he ends up doing something that he didn't want to do. Now I know that I am an emotional eater. I'm, I'm an emotional drinker. I guess I'm an emotional consumer. I think that would be fair to say. When I'm going through stressful times, food looks awfully good to me, especially carbs. I gravitate to carbs. I, yeah, cakes, cookies, breads, cereal. They're the thing that's going to make everything work out. Actually, I never think that. I just... I want it. But I know that after I eat that much, after I eat too much sugar, or after I eat too many starches or too many carbs, that I feel bad. Like I physically feel bad. And, and I feel mentally like I'm, I've somehow failed. And it's the same with drinking. I, I know that if I, if I drink too much, I'm going to physically feel bad and I'm going to mentally beat myself up. And if I, if I spend money because of an emotional feeling, I know that I'm probably doing it for the wrong reason and I'm going to physically feel bad because I bought something I don't need. And mentally, I'm going to feel bad because I've made a poor decision. See, I'm, I'm trying to deal with an emotional situation with an unhealthy strategy and when I can recognize that the unhealthy strategy is trying to, trying to find its way to the surface so that I will employ it, it's, 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 it's testing me and tempting me to use it, then I'm end, I end up fighting multiple, on multiple fronts and I just can't and, and I give in. But what my friend tells me is this. Don't fight the urge. That's not to say just allow the urge to run rampant. No. Don't fight it. 
instead of saying, no, I won't eat that cheesecake, or no, I won't eat that blueberry cobbler, or no, I won't eat that pineapple upside down cake, no, I won't drink those dozen beer, no, I won't do those things that I know I'm going to regret. Instead of fighting them, he says, not right now, maybe later. Cheesecake is in the fridge. I'm not going to eat it right now, but I might in 10 minutes. I might in a half hour. I'm not going to drink today, but it's there for me if I need it. It's there for me if I have to. I'm not going to do it today, but maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do the other thing, but, but maybe tomorrow. See, what he describes is instead of punching it and trying to wrestle it, the way he describes it is to put it in his tool belt. These are coping mechanisms that have helped him survive from as a childhood to adulthood. They got him here. They kept him, they literally kept him alive from then to now. They weren't the best ways of dealing with it. But they got him here. And so rather than trying to fight them and rather than trying to wrestle with them and that, rather than trying to deal with all the stuff that they bring up, he simply says, not right now, maybe later. And then he puts it in his tool bag, he says. He puts it in his, his toolbox. I don't need you right now, but I'm glad you're here. Maybe I'll use you later. I don't need you right now, but I'm going to put you in the back just in case. This, he says, stops him from having to deal with that particular temptation. The conflict, it's, it, it, it keeps him from, from spending his precious emotional energy on that conflict, which allows him to focus on the thing that's really going on for him. The pain that he's experiencing. The, the memories that are flooding back over him. It might not work in every situation. It may not. It might not work for every person. It may not. There are times where it doesn't work for me. I have to be very aware of what it is that I'm doing and why I'm doing it for it to work, which is a practice all on its own. But when I am able to recognize that I am reaching for that fifth bowl of frosted mini wheats because I'm feeling sad or, or nervous or angry. And I'm able to, to employ the method and say, not today. Maybe, maybe tomorrow. Maybe I'll have another bowl tomorrow. Maybe I'll have another slice tomorrow. Maybe I'll have a, another pop tomorrow. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray. I pray that when it comes time for you to deal with the stresses and the strains of your life, that you're able to see them for what they are. Recognize how they're impacting you. Recognize how they are, how you have been trained to move forward through them. And when you encounter those mechanisms that don't leave you feeling very good about yourself, you'll be able to say, not today. Maybe another time, but not today. Amen. Numoltis.